two men stay in it. One at the wheel, the other at a machine gun in the turret. Two others enter the office to collect the dough. Now, they're armed, of course, and so are the track detectives who cover them from the car to the office and back. Now, once the armored car arrives, a uh, stick-up is, is out of the question. Souvenez-vous, dans The Killing, Multim Razia, aux côtés du grand Sterling Hayden, il y avait le petit Elisha Cook Jr., l'un des meilleurs seconds rôles de Hollywood, celui que Bogart appelait Cookie. Du Faucon Maltais au Grand Sommeil et de Babyface Nelson à l'Homme des Vallées Perdues, il aura été le souffre-douleur idéal du cinéma américain. Any of you ever see this woman before? It's Sherry, my wife. Why, you, you've been talking. I just spilled to her. Oh, I didn't honest. What, do you think I'm crazy? I wouldn't jerk you, clown. Come on, clown, sing us a chorus from Pagliacci. You better talk, George. Come clean. Either you talk or we'll get it out of her. Please, you wouldn't do anything to her, Johnny, please. I want it, but if you won't talk, if you won't tell us what you told her... I didn't tell her nothing. Honest, I didn't. Why, why would I do a thing like that, Johnny? I'm sure, she wouldn't. She's just a building inspector, isn't she? Just stopped outside that door to measure the keyhole. Why, you... Let's have it, George. We're gonna get it out of one of you. If you didn't tell her anything, then why was she around here snooping? She must have found the address in my pocket. Sure, that's what it was. Thought I was two-timing her, you know. Running around with another... A car. She's just checking up on me, John. Tell her nothing. Honest, I didn't. You'll let her go, won't you? You won't hurt her, John. Randy, Mike, take him home to his apartment and stick with him until I phone you. Oh, I'm not leaving Sherry. Sure. You're leaving, all right. Now, how are you going? Slide no walk. Come on, George, let's go. At least 50 or 100, maybe. I don't know. I can't tell exactly. You, At least that many. Do you hold the record? I could, very easily. Very easily, I could. Because I've been killed in every shape and form there is. You, you can't name it that I haven't been killed that way. Whether I'm drowning or, you know, going in a tank or knives, pistols, machine guns, or any of that stuff, you know? Fed to the lions, same thing. How, how many uh, slaps did you get? I mean... How many what? How many times did you get slapped? Picture. Oh, God, I don't know. I get punched around all the time. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Why do you think you got these kind of parts all the time? I really don't know, you know? I think, uh, of course, I think John Hewson had a lot to do with it when I did Maltese Falcon for him, you know, when I played the Sydney uh, Green Street's uh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a fun show. But I think he started a lot of it. Baby face Nelson. That was it. That's when they really shot me with a bulletproof vest. What? Could you explain this? That bullet, bulletproof vest. They shot at it. A real one. You mean you got shot with a yeah, bullet? Yeah, with a real bullet with a bulletproof vest. Why, why do you think they did that? I mean, why didn't they use I think they're nuts, but they did it. <laughs> so later I said, no, let's forget that. Because about my third film, I got this thumb cut off, making a picture at Fox with John Ford. Right? How did that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. Uh, we're supposed to be on board a great big sub chaser, you know, in the Adriatic, and, the, you know, and we're coming. We've done everything. We won every medal there was. So anyway, I'm up on the, cat, on the poop deck on the bridge, and we're in a big storm scene. And what they did that, they had thousands of tons of water, and they just cut it loose like that, you know? And so I'm up on the bridge. Sure enough, they go, here comes the water. Here I go off the deck, down, and I grab, try to catch myself, and it piano wire caught it and cut my thumb off. And so Mr. Ford came up to me and said, geez, that was a hell of a shot, Cookie. I said, yeah, it sure was, Mr. Ford. I just cut my thumb off and he passed out. <laughs> he passed out? Just like a light. And he was very superstitious. I never worked for him again. Isn't that funny? Why do you think John Huston chose you to play the gun song? I have no idea. I have no idea at all why he did it. You know, John wrote that script, you know. You know, the Maltese Falcon had been made twice before that. It wasn't very good, I guess. But John was marvelous. That was a marvelous company. Oh, it was like a family. Oh, yeah. 
on with you fellas know, but Warner Brothers is right across from Lakeside Country Club. Well, we had a table over there for lunch every day, and we shot about six weeks or so. You'd go there if you want to, you didn't have to. It was a family thing, and I guess that was one of the reasons it was a great film, I guess. And yet, do you know, that was a B picture, what we call B pictures. It wasn't even nominated for anything, and now it's taught all over the world. That's that same film. Isn't that amazing, though? You know? And John, uh, John and I are the only two fellows left alive. Peter's gone. Uh, what's his name? Played his partner. He's dead. Uh, Sidney's dead. Lee Patrick and Mary Astor now are the only ones. To, and John, of course. In Houston and Bogey. Oh, I always felt watching Bogey's pictures before John that he wasn't that good until John directed him. Felt what I mean? Now, I don't know. But if you look at the pictures before the Maltese Falcon, and you know, Bogey was under contract, well, it was seven years it was then, I think, you know, they signed you, you know, all their options. And you look at those early films, and then look from Houston on, and you'll see what I mean, I think, you know. That was a great part you had in The Big Sleep. Can you tell oh, us? Oh, yeah, yeah, about yeah, that was a good part, yeah. Oh, it was Poison, you mean? Yeah, yeah when good shot, yeah, with Lauren Bacall, Betty Bacall, yeah. Have a good one. Oh, they were a delightful couple, Betty and uh, and Bogey. Betty Bacall. That's her real name, Lauren Bacall. Was it a big difference in, on the set uh, between uh, Houston and Hawks, for instance? Oh, Hawks was great. Oh, oh, just marvelous. Good director. Really good. And easy to work with. Just wonderful, you know. And I'll never forget in those days, you know, you never know when you're going to shoot. So he knew we lived up here where you're shooting this, you know, down in Bishop. And he says, oh, Cookie, I won't need you for three or four weeks. Go home and have some fun. I said, no, he did. I went home and made another picture. <laughs> well, we call it moonlighting. <laughs> I don't want you to do it anymore or not, but it was fun. That's the way Mr. Hawks was. And what a good director. Woo! Man. You were in a killing also. Oh, Stan Kubrick's first picture. Yeah, a hell of a picture. Uh, what, what, what he was just playing? great. Um, what, what, I played Marie Windsor's uh, husband in it. I mean, that's the one when we robbed the racetrack. Just great. Great film. That was Stan's first feature picture. He made a little one in New York with an IMO for 3000 And then when he came out, he made that one. Good film. Good director. Well, look what he did later. Right? Yeah. Good, what, what, good what, what man. What were you doing too. In, the, in the picture? Uh, I played his wife, the wife in it. And they, you know, do you remember when they shot me with a shotgun? My whole face was shot in the picture. How was that done? The makeup man, God, he was marvelous. God, he was just great. They put the BB shots in me, on my whole face. Then I turned around, blew what he calls head off in it. And I staggered into the apartment, and she's sleeping with this guy, and couldn't run off with him, with the loot. Sterling was great, and Sterling Hayden, great. You know, he was a paratrooper, you know. And the original killing, he was supposed to have been mowed down by the FBI. But he hurt his back as a paratrooper, and they have to change the ending. And you remember when the money went with the dog knocking it off, and it went up in the sky? Yeah. Nice family. Good man, too. Sure, I, he wanted me to come to England in Lolita. But you know, in England, you have to be a star. They can't, they don't allow uh, supporting players. You never had any leading roles? Uh... No, 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 thank you. Uh, no, no. I'll tell you why. Uh, there was a playwright years ago named Owen Davis. He won the Pulitzer Prize for uh, Icebound play in New York. And, and his son was my closest friend out here, and we were coming out. And Mr. Davis told me, he said, Cookie, you're going to go to Hollywood. Don't forget this is 1937. And nearly all actors, supporting actors, are going to come from New York stage, which I was on 20 years. Anyway, he said, just play small parts. And I said, why? He said, I'll tell you why. You'll last a long time, and they won't be able to blame the picture on you, because you're going to make a lot of bombs. And I said, wait a minute. He said, Cookie, do you know how many major studios there are on the West Coast? I said, well, no, let's see, there must be six. He said, that's right, there's six or seven. And don't forget, they make 52 pictures each studio a year, 1937, huh? plus one or two feature pictures. And he said, can you imagine trying to find enough good writers for 52 pictures a year times seven or eight major studios plus the features? He said, you're going to be in bomb after bomb. <laughs> and he was right because there just weren't that many writers and that many good scripts. That's right, and that's the old days, because that's gone now, you know. They don't do anything like that today. So you only remembered uh, for the good parts? 
Well, you know, the audience, oh, sure, sure. I remember the bombs very well. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. But I was lucky. I got three or four excellent pictures, you know, big hits. Just lucky, you know. Yeah.